every time I wear this dress, there's this little hope in the back of my brain that somebody is gonna come up to me and be like, Sherbert Lemon, and then we'll high five, and we'll become best friends forever. <laughs> So it is no secret that I am a huge Harry Potter fan. Or I mean, if it is a secret, I have been the worst secret keeper ever. See what I did there? Uh, cue the crickets. And this year, 2016, is an amazing year to be a super Harry Potter fan. Because the beloved series that we thought was pretty much story-wise over isn't. It isn't over. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, one, where have you been? Two, a while ago, it was announced that J.K. Rowling had written a play about Harry Potter called Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which is a play that picks up right where we left off in the epilogue of the seventh book. I honestly can't talk about it without smiling because it's just like all of my dreams have come true. I kind of feel like I'm living in a fever dream this year between this Fantastic Beast and the Gilmore Girls revival. Like there's a lot, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of emotions. I'm a wreck. So for a while now with this play, we've just been getting little snippets of information like some casting choices and a full cast photo. But the last few days in particular, we have been getting more information to just dwell on, which are official portraits for some of the main members of the cast in their characters. And there's been a lot of talk about these pictures. Some people love them, some people hate them. And a lot of you lovelies on Twitter, knowing that I have something to say about it, have asked me how I feel. And so I just figured, you know what, let's do it. Let's react to them. I'm gonna tell you how I honestly feel. So here we go, let's go on to the Pottermore Twitter. Okay, let's see. The first one that's popping up is the Weasley Granger family. And I'm glad that this is the first one that's popping up because this has been, so far, the most controversial casting. So let's talk about it. A lot of people are are upset that Hermione is being played by someone who is not white. I've said this in videos before, but when I was first reading Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, because she was the female character, was initially the one that I was instantly drawn to who I wanted to be. And the reason that I mention this is because I pictured myself as Hermione. I pictured myself as her. And this is where my problem really lies with people being upset about this casting. Because J.K. Rowling created this amazing, empowering, such a great role model character in Hermione. So why in the world would we say to people who are not white, no, you can never be Hermione, when we have this great character whose race is never specified? Her race, the color of her skin, is not specified. And a lot of people have been arguing, well, we have this vision of Hermione from, you know, these eight movies where Emma Watson played her. And that's great. There's no bigger fan of Emma Watson's performance as Hermione in those movies than me. Please do not think for a second that I'm hating on her. But these are not the movies, and why would wouldn't we give this character a chance to be played by someone else? Hermione Granger has just become that much more awesome because we have proved that she can be played by anyone, that any little girl can imagine in their brains that they are her and it could be a reality. Truthfully, for me, her biggest identifier was always her big, like, out of control hair. And oh, look at that. Her daughter has big hair. I think it's easy to fall into a selfish way of thinking when you're thinking about a character that feels precious to you, and I understand that. But your mind isn't the only one out there envisioning this character, and so I just challenge everyone to broaden their views a little bit. This actress could be the best actress for Hermione as an adult. That's how I would like to believe she was casted in this role. And at the end of the day, I also just trust J.K. Rowling, and I know that she must have had a big role in casting this and the whole production of this play, and I trust that she would choose the right person for one of her most beloved characters. And that's all I gotta say about that. We spent enough time on it. Really, what I want to talk about is that on Facebook, when Pottermore posted this, they called Rose, Rose Granger Weasley, which makes me think that Hermione kept her name, that she hyphenated her name, to which I say, yes, girl, get it. Hermione Granger would be like, yo, I want to be a Weasley, but also, I'm a Granger. So let's stop talking about her, and let's talk about Ron. I will say that when I saw this picture this morning, I actually thought to myself, wow, I don't think they could have better casted that. And obviously, I'm only going off of looks here, and I've actually heard from a couple people that they are upset that his hair is not redder. I did look up previous pictures of the actor to kind of see what his hair color was, and it did appear to be kind of more like a dirty, ashy blonde. But here, it definitely looks more red to me. I think they may have lightened his hair, and I just think he looks so much like Ron. There is something about him that really does strike me as having like a Ron quality. And my argument 
and is that if this is his hair color, I'll be happy because a lot of redheads, and I do know like adult redheads, some people's hair stay just as red as when they were young, but other people's hair does kind of lighten over the years. So I'm very happy with this choice. No complaints here. And wrapping up on the Granger Weasleys, I think Rose looks adorable. There's not much I can really say because we don't know that much about her yet, but I'm really excited to learn about her and I wish this child actor all the best. Actually, the only note that I do have after looking at this closer is it almost looks like they modified the Hogwarts robes, unless that's just a jacket. That would be interesting. So moving on, now it's time to talk about the Potters, and these are the pictures that I have yet to see. I did see the big group picture, but I haven't seen these portraits yet, and I am very excited, so let's see what they look like. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh my god, I found it! Oh my gosh! I just felt my heart a flutter. Going to Harry's portrait, yeah, there is a, a definite sense of the angst that Harry always had. And the more I stare at this picture, the more that I actually think this guy looks a lot like Daniel Radcliffe as an adult, which obviously is not the goal, but he looks a lot more. And he's got much blacker hair than Harry ever had. So if we're looking for a more accurate, like, book Harry, th there he is. I also like that this guy kind of has this, like, rugged look to him and not rugged in like the like oh Matthew McConaughey sort of rugged but rugged in the actual sense of that he kind of looks like a guy that's like been through things that's seen things you know but I will say that I feel really good I feel really really good about this Harry Potter and that is obviously like two very big shoes to fill let's take a closer look at Albus I will say that when this kid was first announced as being casted I instantly looked at him and I was like I think that's a good choice is it weird to say that he sort of looks like an Albus like does anybody really look like an Albus. Oh, the tweet accompanying it says, I had the idea he was wearing James's, his older brother's hand-me-downs, said Sam Clement, who is playing uh, Albus. And guys, this brings up the real big question of, are these new Hogwarts robes? Because they definitely don't look like the ones from the movies, and I'm digging them. I'm pumped right now. I'm definitely feeling good about this. Okay, let's zoom in on Ginevra. Honestly, just from one look at this photo, I feel like this woman has an instant Ginny quality. The expression she's making is kind of that softness that Ginny always had, but she also has kind of the strength of like Molly Weasley. Oh, I really am digging this. Honestly, I have really high hopes for Ginny in this. I almost, I feel like I almost am gonna judge Ginny a little bit more if I even ever get to see an incarnation, a taping, a something of this play. Because a lot of fans really didn't love the way that Ginny ended up being portrayed in the later movies, and so I feel like this is our second shot at getting a badass book Ginny. Also, this actress's name is Poppy, which I feel like for whatever reason makes me like her even more. Yeah, just staring at this photo, it feels, it feels like Ginny to me. And so that's our golden trio for the stage production and some of their kids. It honestly all feels like so unreal. Like I still can't believe that this is a thing that's happening. I, I like honestly, oh, so many emotions. Anyway guys, hopefully this video is not a trillion minutes long. But those are my reactions to the new portraits that we've gotten of the Cursed Child cast. Be sure to let me know in the comments how you feel about the castings. Do you have any criticisms or are you really excited about one casting in particular? If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and share it with a friend. If you want to find me on other social media, maybe check out some of my cosplay stuff, here is all of my information and hitting that subscribe button is the best way you can help this Ravenclaw out. And otherwise, I love you lovelies and I will see you in my next video. Bye!